All right, what's up guys? It's your boy John and we have a join head unit. Now this is a single DIN and this is gonna be fitted in the Honda S2000. But because it's a universal head unit and it's very appealing, I know a lot of sports cars like that single DIN setup because my friend who reached out with a Corvette he was like, yo, I need that single DIN. Uh, this car again uh, is also single DIN. So all you single DIN folks, I got something for you. This is a 10 inch, uh, or not a 10 inch, but 8.8, .8, but Android 10. And it has all the bells and whistles when it comes to DAC and DPS, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, wired and wireless. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be installing it in the S2000 today. Right, so I have my assistant here with me today. He's gonna to be helping me, actually he's not an assistant, he actually owns this beautiful S2000, but he's gonna be doing the unboxing. The first thing you'll see is that there is a LCD. What does LCD stand for? A liquid crystal display. That's correct, That's, he knows his things. And I believe this is the 8.8, .8. we'll see. Ooh, we got the good foam. It's not like that styrofoam stuff, it's actually a nice foam. And then we have an 8.8 .8 right there. It's beautiful. Now the reason why we chose this 8.8 .8 is it will be able to fit in the Honda S2000 without any trouble. So it's gonna be great. All right, next in the box is the single DIN itself. Nice and compact. We have an IDE cable with these clips. Now Toyota also uses those clips. So it's, uh, it's nice to have if you have a Toyota. It's a very universal set of clips. And here's the rear IO. We have um, antenna, microphone, USBs. Now these are the, your RCA jacks when you're dealing with um, you know, component line for left, right, rear, front, and then also subwoofers. Optical out, which is really nice. Not a lot of the head unit manufacturers actually have optical, so it's really nice to have optical because you get that nice clean digital setup. Now these wires are here generally Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and GPS. So, it, and then we have an additional, uh, oh, this is a, so that's, these are the Wi-Fi cables. And then we have a GPS antenna that's included in the box too. This output right here is going to be your main harness that connects to the OEM. So it looks good. Fuse, pretty, pretty standard, very clean and um, very compact, which is nice. Thing in the box, you guys can probably imagine, it should be the harnesses uh, with, Harness one right here, so key one, key two. So if you guys actually have steering wheel controls, you'll be able to map it with that. Um, not all, um, I just forget about it. Yeah, steering wheel controls. We have a USB, great. And this is your GPS, beautiful. Hit it with that microphone, honky dory. USB type A to fe uh, male to female. Great, it's an extender. And uh, then more, um, another, could be Wi-Fi. Okay, GPS. So that's the GPS one. Maybe there's uh, 4G antennas. And uh, then a Bluetooth pairing guide, and then more stuff right here. So uh, great things right there. So the two extra wires are for 4G. Now, I'm gonna, for our use case, we just use CarPlay. We don't really, um, buy an extra SIM card, but if that's something you can do, it has that capability, but um, I think that's pretty rare for um, for at least us in the United States, but very cool. All right, so um, we already took out the radio door. The reason why is um, we did an install before. That's why it doesn't have a radio door. So we're gonna have the owner talk about the radio door and what needs to be done to remove the radio door. If you had a Honda S2000, if you don't, then um, it's just, you know, you look up some other guides for your car because I know it is a universal, but uh, so what did you have to do to get this OEM radio out? So pretty much on all the S2000s, I don't know if we'll put a picture here, but um, you have a radio door, which kind of folds uh, over here. And uh, the way that you take it off, there are actually no screws. It's all kind of, um, it's all kind of just clipped into place. And it's really awkward, but you have to do like a little jiggle and like pop the radio door out. It's really hard to describe, but once you're doing it, you're gonna feel like you're breaking the radio door, but it will come out, it should be perfectly fine. And um, once that's taken out, um, 
when we decided to mount this singleton, we noticed that the mounting locations were a little weird in this specific car. As you can see, there are only screws like on each side, we have four screws. So um, what we decided to do was just take the OEM bracket that is provided with the original radio, and we decided to just mount the actual radio using the screws over here with the, uh, the bracket as well, or sorry, on the opposite side, right over here, my bad. But we decided that we would have the brackets like this and put the radio on as well. One thing to note when doing this though, is that you don't want to use super long screws and have them go into the, uh, into the, um, the single bin unit. You want to make sure that you use as shallow of a screw as possible just to make sure you don't accidentally damage anything on the inside. But, um, anyways, um, we're going to do the install now and yeah. keep going. All right. So here we go. We have the OEM bracket right here and then we have it kind of loosely placed and it's the only way we can have it, um, flex around this contraption area because it's a tiny area so we have the brackets both sides and what we're going to talk about now is the OEM harness which is right here so the OEM harness we bought a a what is this oh, radio harness from Amazon or something like that I'll link this one if you're going to go on Honda uh, this is just a, a typical Honda. It looks like a two, four, six, eight, ten. So like a twenty pin right here, and we have everything plugged in. Um, we're using black tape because uh, it's just how that's how we roll. <laughs> Don't hate. I know it's not soldered and not heat shrink and stuff like that. Uh, this is his his work, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make this harness, but you just at this point all you do is pretty much match the colors um, Purple purple green green. This is probably the rear speakers yellow yellow is going to be constant power red is accessory white is um, One of the speakers in the front So yeah, here you go. You can take a look at it, but you want to look at what, what you want to do is go to the uh, wiring some the wiring diagram of the OEM and then you can the join has the wiring for theirs right here um, just follow their theirs and after that all you have to do is plug it in so we're gonna plug it in make sure you hear that nice click now we also have the antennas right here and then we also have the radio sorry it's not in focus but we should be able to plug it in. I like to plug it in, not everything installed, so everything works. Make sure Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USBs, and all that works. So we're gonna do that right now. Can you plug in the main harness right here? It's in there good. Now with the OEM, there's also some extra harnesses. Now this case could be XM radio, it could be a backup camera, other accessories, six, this CD changer in the rear, and so forth. Um, we don't have anything plugged into that one. And then we have radio antenna. So this one is generally the radio antenna. We also are going to plug it into the back, but for our testing purposes, there's not enough slack so we can test it thoroughly. So let's plug in the display and kind of debug it. Make sure everything works. Now with these IDE cables, there's a notch at the top. So you want to match this notch with the top notch of the display. We are good. And now we can turn the car on. And if you saw the back of this display, you can see that you can actually move the screen up and down depending on your mounting spot. So um, it gives you more adjustability. I moved mine. For my NSX, I actually put a 13, 14 inch display and had to pretty much move this, these things all the way down so I can make some more clearance. It's just a matter of, you know, it's universal. So we have the key on and let's put this to accessory. And it fires right up. Wow, great. So you notice how fast that boot up time was? 
incredible, incredible. Now the next thing you want to test is sound. So we, now we have no audio. We're going to check the Bluetooth because for us the main thing, yes, Google Play has Wi-Fi, you can watch YouTube, but for us, our Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is the most important. And we're going to do Apple CarPlay first and check out the Bluetooth audio. So um, this is an iPhone. We're going to hook up an iPhone in. So we're going to hit the search. And then we have the, uh, the iPhone searching too. Boom. We have that in. I think it's connected, right? Oh, uh, I might have accidentally hit the wrong thing. One second. End of scan. He's entering the pin. And now it's connected. Mm -hmm. Great stuff here. So, sometimes with Android head units, that's all you need for Apple CarPlay to work. Um, so we're gonna go to there. It might be CarLink? Or yeah, CarLink, I guess. Connecting, verification approved. And then on his phone it says, hey, do you want to use Apple CarPlay? You type USB. Now this is all we did. All we hooked up was Bluetooth, no USBs, nothing. I just want to show you guys the process because it's very easy to do. I bet he's Mr. Mr. T right here is very happy because yeah. now you walk into your car, you start and you just go. Now you can also charge it or sometimes maybe the wireless connection isn't good. We have the wired option there too, but wireless is the future and you just because your phone's usually in the pocket in my pocket at least I, I keep my phone in my pocket and we just go. I don't like taking it out There you go All right, so we got this USB and we routed it over here So now it's we fish basically all I did was fish it through that little hole and it pops out of that hole and pulled it down so whenever we need to have a hard wire charge or thing or maybe put a usb drive put movies songs and stuff it's accessible right there now join gave us two usb type a's but we're just going to use one just so it's cleaner and if you if we want to let's say we get a dash cam or something like that that needs to get powered by usb we can actually uh, installed the other one too but for our purposes right now we're going to have one phone plugged in at all times if, if any so that's all it's going to take now we're just going to put it back in and um, I'm going to show you that process so these universal head units let I me mean, you can move your the gear lever a little bit so you get more room but now these universal head units have a lot of flexibility in it so um, yes, they might not fit perfectly, but if you add the time and effort and you kind of mess with it, you're going to be able to have a pretty decently fitting head unit, relatively speaking. You know, again, this car is tiny, so that's why I had to cut it. Honestly, we had to keep on uh, wiggling it. All right, now we just put the screen back in. Sheesh. Join makes it easy. Boom. Turns on. Bluetooth signal is up and running. Now we can change all these widgets. Let me close this door. Now we can change all these widgets and such so we can have things that we use more often uh, in our case again we're going to use car link a lot so we type in that car link it says connecting it's going to do some handshaking with the iphone and authenticate and then hooks up directly hopefully in front of device to connect yeah there we go verification approved boom no, all right, things look installed. How this is how it looks like in an S two thousand. Look at that, pretty clean, pretty clean.
Uh, so what do you think of uh, the install? I'm not I'm not gonna show your face or anything, but you know, just uh. Honestly, the install was really easy. It was easier than uh, the previous unit I had in, and in addition to that, um, just the fact that this has wireless car play is is kind of crazy. Um, I don't know if if you've ever dealt with you know a uh, a wired connection to a uh, to an Android head unit. Um, you've probably had a few times where you try to you know reconnect over and over again, and just having it connect through Bluetooth that quickly, it's just, it's kind of insane. It feels kind of close to how an OEM car would be. Yep. Well, there you have it. Thank you guys for watching. And if you guys were interested in this product, make sure to check the links down below. And uh, you know, you stuck this long in the video, might as well just like it and show some love in the comments. Hit your boy up, you know, smash that like button. He already knows it's your boy Fluff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, but you know, yeah. So there it is. Joying 8.8 inch Android 10 head unit, amazing wireless Apple CarPlay. You have Android Auto too for your Android folks. I'm an Android guy, so yep, I'll be using that. But just look at that. I mean, I. It just looks beautiful. The display, it's bright, it's high resolution, looks better than anything Honda's doing right now. Even on like the new Type R and stuff like that, the resolution doesn't look this clean or this, the IPS panels really, the colors really pop. I mean, you look at the maps, you look at the, um, just the icons. I don't even know how to, let me look at that. Look at that music icon, nice and bright. And I don't know if that's translating well, but trust me it has beautiful colors it doesn't look like a nintendo ds screen okay it looks good all right see ya